Star Trek versus Star Wars. Which Star Wars. side are you Star Wars. on? Star Wars. Well, I... Star Trek is cheap rubbish. Oh dear. I like it. Them are fighting words. They are very sweeping statements. Yes. Yeah. But they're true. Let's try and compare them then, shall we? Easy. Brilliant news. Visual effects. In its day, the original Star Trek television show did break ground when it was released and even helped pave the way for Star Wars A New Hope. Honestly, you can't compare this with this. That is actually my exact point. Star Trek is a TV series and Star Wars is a saga based on nine films with massively higher budgets. Massively higher. But here we are comparing the two. That's how captivating Star Trek is, despite this huge handicap. Carrie Fisher in a metal bikini. Objectifying <laughs> women. Hey, yeah, sure. Well, but what about uh, Jar Jar Binks? You saved my again. That's slow. Science. Star Trek is science fiction. Star Wars is more fantastical. The universe is more realistically modelled in Star Trek. It's supposed to be our future living in space, not just set in some spurious galaxy far, far away. Right, warp drives are just as fantastical as lightsabers. You can't actually go faster than the speed of light. No, but that's exactly, that's why the warp speed supersedes light speed by warping space-time and then travelling at light speed through it. Speed Lucas, to get round that, he needed his cast to travel enormous distances in seconds. Hyperspace. Let's call it hyperspace. Yeah, it's light speed, but let's call it hyperspace. Where you go, it hypes up space. Yeah, yeah, that's what, definitely what it does. Yeah, so it's all hype. Star Trek wins again. Oh, that's tasty. I oh, know, it's good, isn't it? Video games. Star Wars has given us one of the best role-playing games ever, Knights of the Old Republic, and more than double that of any Star Trek games. In fact, IGN even did a review of the latest Star Trek game that said, Playing Star Trek the game felt like playing an unfinished version of the game that, even when finished, still wouldn't be very good. Uh, I'm going to have to play the uh, Drusilla card here. Hey, how about that? Okay. Find women again. The ships. Sure, Star Wars has the Millennium Falcon, but it's nothing compared to the iconic Enterprise. That's not a fair comparison. The Millennium Falcon only gets screen time in like four films. The flipping Enterprise is in every single episode. And what about the ships like TIE Fighters, X-Wings? How cool are they? Star Trek only have shuttles that ferry people back and forth, and they don't have any firepower. You're converting me. Good. Come over to the dark side. Ship designs in Star Wars are varied and creative, and most of the Star Trek Federation ships look the same. What about uh, Borg ships? Eh? They're, they're cubes, they're, they're pretty cool. Yeah, good design. Music. John Williams. Well, this is true. Again, it's true. But like I was saying, the budget just isn't the same. Of course you're going to have like orchestras playing and much better music. Good composition. Because he's getting paid a lot and he's a famous composer. Well, because he's a good composer, yeah, they used a good um, composer. What about Wrath of Khan? What about it? That was pretty good, you have to admit it. Pretty good. The next generation intro. It's boring, it's like a TV. Yeah, it's like, a, yeah, it's like an old, old 80s TV. It's because it is an old 80s well, TV. Well, there we go, and that's why it's bad. The Imperial March. Yeah, but is that Star Wars or Superman or Jurassic Park or Indiana Jones? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Or Hook. Weapons. Who doesn't love the concept of a small little gun that's rather than bullets, it shoots lasers? That is classic sci fi 101. Exactly. It's not creative. Lucas went one step further and decided to make a sword out of that thing and then like, like uh, have a Jedi Knight's yeah, whole concept a good thing. Idea. Instead of like a stupid phase gun with set to stun. Aliens. Star Wars has a lot less screen time because it's only it's only film based, so it doesn't have time to cover all of like the aliens' backstories and philosophies and cultures like it does in Star Trek. They can really dive into to the, the backstories of the Star aliens. Star Trek. At best, Star Wars aliens are like given a prop or something just to suggest that they've got some history or some 
some interesting culture, and that's it. There's nothing to really get your teeth into. Just because you've got a bump on your forehead doesn't mean that you're an alien. Most of their Star Trek aliens look like a man in a suit. Vulcans have funny ears, Klingons have rigid foreheads. Star Wars has much more density. What about if you've forgotten to mention Gungans? You saved them again! One slip up. That's like... That's um, all you can hold on to. Wookiees. You want to get into the backstory of Wookiees? Wookiees, yeah. yeah. Watch the Star Wars Christmas special. <laughs> the plot. Originally titled Wagon Train to the Stars, Star Trek set out to tell complex, mature stories that use the futuristic backdrop to address problems and issues in contemporary American society. Star Wars has the Force, a magical energy made from midi chlorian. Brilliant, that's... Um, How cool is the Force? Oh. It's fantastical. The Force has even inspired a religion. What's Star Trek then? That's actually, no, right. it's inspired a language. The language of Klingon is actually a living language that people use and have even like made Shakespearean interpretations of Hamlet using just Klingon. Well, I'm not convinced. Well, what do you think? Are Star Wars and Star Trek even comparable? What side do you take? Leave it in the comments below!